Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear sisters and brothers, a hearty welcome to all of you to participate in this Sunday liturgical Mass. We are celebrating the 19th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Today, we will see how God is encountered in the silence. Even in the gospel, we will see after the storm, Peter and the others experienced Jesus in the calming of the water. And then they make their act of faith. Sisters and brothers, all of us daily or periodically have to go through this kind of an encounter where there is a ruffling of our tranquility. But that is not to be looked at negatively. Every change has to go through this process. But we must have our faith. Right through these days, we have been looking at the word of God telling us that the righteous man will walk by faith. And Jesus has been saying, if you have faith, you can move mountains. Faith in Jesus. That will make Jesus work in us if we have faith in him. And we all do have. And that is why we have experienced miracles in our life. If we have failed to be very strong in our faith when the storms have come, let us ask him for pardon. Let us get resettled inside ourselves and with one another, so that in that tranquility we can start making progress. Let us ask his pardon and say together, I, I confess, confess to Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers and sisters, and that, that I have greatly sinned in, in my thoughts, and in my words, in what I have done, and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, Ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God, our loving Father, have mercy on us as children, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy.
let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, whom taught by the Holy Spirit we dare to call Father, bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Let us now listen attentively to the Word of God. A reading from the first book of the Kings. Elijah came to a cave and lodged there. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him. And he said to him, Go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind rent the mountains and broke in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind, and after the wind an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake, and after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire, and after the fire, a still small voice. And when Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Let our response be, let us see, O Lord, your mercy and give us your saving help. Our response, let, let us see, O Lord, Lord your, your mercy and give us your saving help. I will hear what the Lord God has to say, a voice that speaks of peace. His help is near for those who fear him, and his glory will dwell in our land. Our response, let, let us see, O Lord, your, your mercy, and, and give us your saving help. Mercy and faithfulness have met, justice and peace have embraced. Faithfulness shall spring from the earth, and justice, sh and justice look down from heaven. Our response, let, let us see, O Lord, your, your mercy, and, and give us your saving help. The Lord will make your purpose, and our earth shall yield its, its fruit. Justice shall march before him, and peace shall follow his steps. Our response, let us see, O Lord, your mercy, and give us your saving help. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience bears me witness in the Holy Spirit that I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut from Christ for the sake of my brethren my kinsmen by race. They are Israelites, and to them belong the sonship, the glory, the covenant, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and of their race, according to the flesh, is Christ, who is God over all, blessed forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Acclamation. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. May the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ enlighten the eyes of our hearts 
so that we may know the hope to which he has called us. Spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up into the hills by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone, but the boat by this time was many furlongs distant from the land, beaten by the waves, for the wind was against them. And in the fourth watch of the night, he came to them walking on the water. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately he spoke to them saying, Take heart, it is I, have no fear. And Peter said to him, Lord, if it is you, bid me come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came to Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, O man of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. O man of little faith, why did you doubt? Sisters and brothers, all of us, do have doubts, isn't it? But what is the objective of our doubt? Which is the direction in which it is going? You remember long ago, Zachariah, when the angel appeared to him, had a doubt. Uh, he was wondering whether in old age his wife, Elizabeth, would conceive. And that doubting was in a way, not having faith in God. Because with God, everything is possible. Nothing is impossible. So you see, that kind of a doubt. On the other hand, Mary, she says, but how can this be? I do not know a man. So what is this kind of a doubt that she has? Saying, how is that going to happen? It's an open kind of a question. And so the angel said, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and will overshadow you. And so the child will be born and he will be holy. So you see, this is another kind of a doubt which is open-ended, not closed. Peter, when he was looking at Jesus, there was no problem. But as soon as he looked at the wind, and the waves, he shifted his view from there to this place. And then he began to sink in it. So let's be clear about this. When we change our focus and we look at things which are material, they drown us in. And then we are afraid. I'm sure you must have had such experiences. Whenever you have doubted and have looked at the negative, that negative overwhelms you. 
Look at the first reading, what it's saying. Right? No? There is always in us a lot of disturbance. Disturbance that comes and shatters us completely. We are not able to sit still. Then everything is moving up and down within us. We are in turmoil. Then there's a kind of heat that goes on or cold. And then all of a sudden, there is a calm. And in the calm, everything falls in place. St. Ignatius, he always told us to spend an hour in prayer. The first half an hour, even for him, in his diary, we would see that it is disturbed for half an hour. There's a lot of turmoil that goes on. Then comes the tranquility. That everything is so silent. And in the silence, he can see and see what God is revealing to him. And that brings him great courage. I know one companion of mine. He became a preacher. He was an activist, social activist. But all of a sudden, the Lord called him and he started reading the scriptures and interpreting it to the people. And thousands of people would come. He did not say Alleluia and praise the Lord. But he only preached the word of God. And people listening to the word would fall on their feet and fall on the ground and they would sort of uh, uh, froth sometimes and they would be healed. And he would tell me, he says, you know, I did not know what I have to say. I would read the word of God. I would read other commentaries on that. But till the last minute, I did not know what exactly I had to say. But just before, I would be all the time in prayer. And there would be a great silence in me. And then I would go and I would experience the Spirit working in me. And all things would fall in place as I began to speak. And I myself used to be amazed at the kind of understanding that I would get as I was preaching. This is the way God works in our lives. You see, the second reading is telling us how there is the storm. And when the storm is there, we are tossed in the storm. But Jesus does not leave us. He comes to us in the storm. We might be afraid of him, not understand him. But he will tell us, don't be afraid. It is I. This is his assurance to us. And if we are focused on him, then we will slowly get from that state to saying to him, can I now walk straight on this troubled waters? And he will say, step out, come. And with him, with us, then that faith will give us courage. My dear sisters and brothers, let us know that all of us are graced. Grace means the Holy Spirit, God's presence is with us to give us this kind of openness to experience Jesus and his power in our life. This power brings healing to us, brings integration in our lives and gives us the courage to do things not for us but for him, through him and with him for the greater glory of God. Let us remember that. So, if there is anything that we want to do, we have faith in Jesus, it will work wonders. Mountains will be moved. So many people keep telling me, Father, I'm amazed at what God has done through me. And even they are amazed. Things are working. But for what? For the good. For building up the kingdom. For advancement in the right direction. Let us thank God for all these graces that we have received and the faith that we have. Let us pray that our faith be strengthened. And what do we do for that? I have always been telling you, let us do what Jesus does and wants to do through us. So let's be clear about this. Every night he would spend time with his father and in the morning hours. So the whole night would be a chunk of prayer relationship with his father which he needs to have in us 
So when we give time to him in the night, uniting ourselves to him, he will unite himself to the Father through us and give us that same kind of an experience so that in the morning as we wake up, we will give him the time and he will take us once again in the process of God working in our lives. And we will see that through the day, things will work out according to his plan. What will be the sign that we always feel at peace, even in the storm, even when there is ruffling of the seas, we will be walking like he did on the waters. My dear sisters and brothers, this is a surety. Let's practice this for a while. Hold our hands, keep it in our lap, keep our back straight, close our eyes, and just be present to his presence within us at every breath. Jesus is filling us, body, mind, and spirit with his presence. What else do we need? Why are we centered on ourselves? Let's be centered on him. Let's give him all that is happening within us, our thoughts, our feelings, our experiences, our attitudes, our intentions, all these prejudices, these biases that we have. Let's keep it all in him. They will get purified and he will give us that which we require to have faith and in that faith the impossible will be made possible. Let us now rise and profess our faith, that faith which we have received, and deepen ourselves in it. Let us say together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us now, my dear sisters and brothers, pray to God for our needs and let us ask him to grant them to us in faith. Let our response be, Lord, be gentle to us. Lord, be gentle to us. For the Pope, the bishops, the clergy, and the religious, that in their ministry they may imitate Christ, who approaches the people gently, Yet firmly we pray, Lord, Lord be, be gentle, gentle to us. For people in public service, that they may serve the people with generosity of heart, so that people with grievances may approach them without fear, we pray, Lord, Lord be, be gentle, gentle to us. us. That Christians who follow Christ and are loved by God the Father may not deal rudely with a brother or sister who has done an offense but may show forgiveness we pray lord, lord be, be gentle, gentle to us. us for those christians who waver in their faith may have the courage to cry out to the lord who never abandons a sincere seeker we pray lord, lord be, be gentle, gentle to, to us. us for all of us present in this Eucharistic assembly, that enlightened by the word of God, we may live in our lives in simplicity of heart for everything that creates awe and the spectacular passes away as it comes. We pray, Lord, Lord, Lord be, be gentle, gentle to, us. to us. My dear sisters and brothers, you have many other needs that you would like to pray for. This is an opportunity for you. 
Let's close eyes and present these petitions to the Lord. And let us now pray for the whole world that God may set us free from this deadly virus which has been paralyzing the whole world. Almighty and merciful God, who show your love to all creation everywhere, be graciously and hear our prayers. We make for all those affected by the coronavirus in various parts of the world. We come before you asking for a quick control of the outbreak, for a healing of those affected by the victims and their families. We pray for the doctors doing research that an effective vaccine to combat the sickness is speedily found. We pray for the government and health authorities that they take appropriate steps for the good of the people. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. my dear sisters and brothers that this our sacrifice and offering of ourselves and our prayers may be acceptable to God our loving father may the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church be pleased O Lord to accept the offerings of your church for in your mercy you have given them to be offered and by your power, you transform them into the mystery of our salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body, we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim,
indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, Jesus took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of Jesus' death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Philip Neri our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. with faith in Jesus, who brings about a transformation, a reformation, and a confirmation to himself. Let us now, at this moment, keep all our intentions in mind for ourselves and for those who are near and dear to us and all who have asked us to pray for them. Let us now, filled with his spirit, united to Jesus, say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, for the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and, and the, the glory, glory are yours, yours now, now and, forever. and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, 
look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of Jesus be with you always. And with your spirit. United to Jesus. Let's turn to each other with some sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. This is Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to receive him. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us now, my dear sisters and brothers, in faith, Pray to Jesus and experience him in our lives as he comes to us spiritually. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. My heart's like a flute, and I want to play all day. Jesus Christ is my music master. Deep from my heart flows a simple melody. Great is his love. Take, O Lord, and receive all my liberty, my memory, my understanding, and my entire will, all that I have and possess. You have given all to me. To you, O Lord, I return it. All is yours. Dispose of it wholly according to your will. Only give me your love and your grace, for that is sufficient for me. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. May the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. My dear sisters and brothers, I feel so good that you in faith have been attending the Mass at the Basilica. We are all aware that we, because of his faith, St. Francis Xavier's faith, we received our faith, our ancestors, and they passed it on to us. We may be tottering, we may be, you know, going up and down with our faith, but we do have it. And remember, faith in Jesus is the greatest gift we have. We have a different outlook in life. We have a holistic way of looking at things because Jesus has come to give us life and to give it to the fullest. I want to thank you because you're so really wonderful. In spite of your ups and downs, you've been faithful to the Lord. And he is doubly faithful to you. So let us receive his blessing and be very good, strengthened by him, and reach out to others, not by ourselves, but by faith in Jesus, who will touch the lives of others and transform them. The Lord is with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us. Father, 
Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go in the joy and peace to live our faith in Jesus. Thanks be to God. The Mass is ended.